Today we're starting chapter five. We are dealing with biological diversity and conservation. We're going to talk about a number of issues uh, today. Today we're going to, first in section 5.1, we're going to talk about vanishing species. Are you guys ready? Okay, yes. the enthusiasm level is a little lower than I'd like it to be. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, sweet. I hear a lot of girls ready and the guys are just quiet. Uh, but we're going to get started either way. <laughs> Uh, we're talking about section 5.1, vanishing species. Inside this section, we're going to answer the question, what is biodiversity? First thing we're going to talk about. We've got to know what it is before we start talking about the issues with biodiversity. Then we're going to talk about island biodiversity. Then we're going to talk about the importance of biodiversity. Why in the world do we care about biodiversity? That's what we're going to talk about today. And then we're going to talk about some of the threats to biodiversity. So you ready to start? Uh, all right, two people are, and, and Nolo is also. Okay, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity refers to the variety of life in a given area. So we take a certain area, and we're looking at the variety of life in that area. And the way we measure biodiversity is, looking at, is by looking at the number of species present. So if you have a greater number of species, there's a higher biodiversity. If you have a lower number of species, there's lower biodiversity. For example, we can have a cornfield, and in that cornfield we can have two different species of beetle. But if you take that and you compare that to the tropical rainforest, you will see that the tropical rainforest may contain as many as 5,000 different species of beetle. Which one has a greater biodiversity? The rainforest. The rainforest, right? That's fairly obvious. Where do we find the most di biodiversity? We've, sp we've spoken about some of the issues in the past. Um, one of the factors that are going to determine biodiversity is the climate. The warmer the climate, the more biodiversity you will find. And we'll give an ex You guys are probably asking, wondering why the, the flags are up there, right? Um, the to give an example of that, in Canada we have 163 different species of mammals. But as you come more south, you see in the United States we have 367. You go down to Mexico, we have 439 different species of mammals. So as we go to warmer climates, we have greater biodiversity. Wait. Tropical rainforests. Coral reefs and large tropical lakes are the most rich, are the richest habitats when it comes to biodiversity. Let's talk about island biodiversity. Yay, that's a picture of St. Martin. I took that picture while I was coming over the hill going from one side of the island to the other side. All right, so there you can see our beautiful water. I miss it. I, I hope I get to go there again sometime soon so I can swim in that water. Um, but anyhow, when it when it comes to the size of the island, if all abiotic factors are the same, then the larger islands will have greater biodiversity. Why do you think that's the case? You have more space, right? Um, you have more space, so you have different types of environments within um, that island, and that allows for different types of species and so on. Uh, when a smaller island is warmer, so it has a warmer climate, this is um, very important, than a larger island, the smaller island will probably have a greater biodiversity. So yes, the size of the, the island is a factor, but that's not the only factor. Another factor would be the climate. Now, why do you think warmer islands would have greater di biodiversity? What, what is, what's so special about warmer islands or warmer climates? Okay, that, that's a factor. The decay rate is faster, so the recycling of nutrients are, are faster, um, and that is going to be a factor in terms of the island. So let's look at the entire Caribbean, and then I'm going to show you guys my island, and you guys are not going to laugh. Wait, where is he, Martin? That's, I'm going to show it to you. All right, so we have all these islands in the Caribbean. Uh, you see uh, Puerto Rico over here and um, St. Martin. Uh, I said you guys are not going to laugh. After you show it, yeah. Oh, after I show you. Okay. You see this dot here? No. no. Yes. <laughs> That's a country. 
No, 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 no. If you look at that dot, that's a group of islands. <laughs> St. Martin is this part of the dot up here. Okay? <laughs> so you can, see, uh, you can see the difference between my island and Puerto Rico as an example. But yeah, St. Martin is that, that top right part of that dot. Isn't that exciting? All right. Anytime you guys want to visit St. Martin, let me know. I'll hook you up with some good deals and all that good stuff. Anyhow, let's go now and talk about the importance of biodiversity. We got to move. We only have seven minutes, so let's go through this stuff. Number one, number one, biodiversity adds beauty to nature. Um, if you look out on a field and all you see is corn, that's cool and all, yeah, because you need some corn fields. However, if that was what you see regardless of where you look, that's just not as beautiful. All right, so biodiversity adds beauty, number one. Number two, life depends on life. If you break any one part of a food chain, that can have devastating effects on a community. We looked at the relationships between, we looked at the predator-prey relationships, we looked at lynx and hares, and we saw that if there's a change in one population, that influences another population. And that is a tight relationship that we see all throughout um, the different biomes that we look at. Then, biodiversity adds, it brings stability to an ecosystem. What do we mean by that? Well, if you look at a cornfield, what happens if there's a disease that happens in one of the corn stalks? It spreads rapidly, okay? And if we have more biodiversity, that contributes stability, um, and the, the same species are spread out, and diseases don't get spread as quickly. Um, species are like rivets holding together an airplane. Are the, are, are the rivets holding the airplane together? All right, the more you have, the more stable it is. The less you have, the less stable it will be. Now, specifically, let's talk about why biodiversity is important to people. Um, the reasons that we just looked at were just general reasons why biodiversity is important. Um, but for people, biodiversity gives human what? Number one, oxygen. Where do we get oxygen from? Plant. Plant. Okay, the plants release oxygen, we breathe that in. Do we need that? Uh, obviously, we need that. Number two, carbon dioxide removed. Uh, where does the carbon dioxide go? Plants. Okay, plants use carbon dioxide. If they didn't, carbon dioxide levels would rise and we would die. And we don't like dying. It's not fun. So, uh, number three, it gives us variety in diet. Oh, some of you are excited for that, huh? All right, number four, cloth production. Where would we be without cloth? <laughs> you sound a little too excited about that. Um, cloth production, that's obviously important. Um, thank God we have cloth. This would be a, a very weird class. Um, increase crop production. We can increase crop production by crossbreeding and medicines, for example, penicillin, which was a very important discovery in terms of how that's used. Now let's talk about extinction. What is extinction? It refers to the uh, disappearance of a species when the last of its members dies. Since 1980, 40 species of plants and animals have become extinct in the U.S. alone. And obviously that's a problem since um, different species are interrelated. When we talk about threatened species, that's a little different. Those are species whose numbers are declining rapidly. And when we talk about endangered species, uh, those are species whose numbers are so low that extinction is possible. So we start with when the numbers start declining, the species is um, threatened if it's declining <coughs> rapidly. If it reaches a really low level, it's endangered. And if that continues, it can become extinct. Uh, there are a number of threats to biodiversity, um, and changes to habitats can threaten organisms with extinction. When there's a change in the habitat, that changes the carrying capacity, and that has a number of effects. Um, these changes are the causes of threats to biodiversity. 
And what we're going to look at are four threats to biodiversity. Number one, habitat loss. Number two, habitat fragmentation. Number three, habitat degradation. And number four, introduction of exotic species. What's number one? Loss. loss. Two, fragmentation. fragmentation. Three, degradation and exotic. <laughs> That's a good way to, uh, you guys can remember it that way. Make sure you fill in the other words if I ask you that on a test. So let's first talk about habitat loss. What is habitat loss? The biggest threat. Exotic. Exotic species. Habitat loss, that would be the biggest threat to biodiversity. Of all the threats that we're talking about, this is the worst. Um, when habitats are lost, the essentials of life are lost for species that depend on those habitats which makes sense. If the habitat is no longer there, if you depend on that habitat, um, that can cause problems. For example, uh, making a meadow into a parking lot, that's habitat loss. Um, draining a swamp for housing development, that's another example of habitat loss. Mining coral reefs for building material and collecting for souvenirs and aquarium decorations. These are things that happen on a regular basis and these are um, removing habitats, and that is a significant threat to biodiversity. The next threat would be habitat fragmentation. What is, fragment, what is fragmentation? Part of the habitat. Okay, so you're, you're separating stuff? Okay, so habitat fragmentation uh, re refers to when we're separating wilderness areas from other wilderness areas. Um, how do we do that? By um, building roads and cities. These can separate wilderness areas, areas from other wilderness areas. You start with a big wilderness and you, s you put a road through it. You're separating um, sections from sections. And what happens when you do that is the habitats essentially become virtual islands. And we looked at island biodiversity, and we saw that the smaller the island is, the less biodiversity we will have. So if you take a big area and you cut it in two, for example, and you have these two virtual islands, what's gonna, what can that do to the biodiversity? Make it less, right? Because now you have smaller patches of land, and that has an effect on biodiversity. All right, let's continue. There are going to be some biotic issues. Biotic means what? Bio I mean, life issues. Living, right? Living things. Um, there are abiotic factors and biotic factors. There are going to be some biotic issues. Um, this can restrict the range of organisms. And for migratory organisms, if the area is restricted, they can starve. This, for example, happened with, can happen with zebras and wildebeests. Th they are migratory animals, and if you separate, uh, if you build a city, for example, that can restrict their range, and that can have some issues where that's concerned. Of course, there can also be abiotic issues, and for example, it can cause climate change, and we can have what we call the edge effect. And what the edge effect is, is the, f the edge effect is when we have different conditions along the boundaries of an ecosystem. All right, so by separating um, one section from another section, now you have different edges, and along the edges, you're going to have, or it's possible to have different conditions. Uh, habitat degradation. What was, the no what was the first and greatest threat to biodiversity? Uh, habitat loss. And the second one was habitat. habitat fragmentation. And now we're talking about habitat degradation. What does to degrade mean? The lower, the standard. lower the standard, you're damaging, and so on. Um, yes, so habitat de degradation would be damage to a habitat by pollution. And there are three types of pollution. We have air pollution, water, water. water pollution, and Land pollution, air pollution, water pollution, land pollution. We're going to talk about these three types of pollutions. First, we're going to talk about air pollution. So let's talk about air pollution. Uh, oh, you can't see it clearly in this um, picture, but that's a lot of smog. Well, you can see some of it. 
Anyhow, um, air pollution, the problem with air pollution, it can cause breathing problems and irritation of membranes in the eyes and the nose, of course, that can be a problem. And of course, it can lead to other uh, more harmful effects. Um, the greatest source of air pollution, burning fossil fuels. That is the number one source of air pollution. And that, of course, can cause some significant problems. Uh, let's now talk about water pollution, because that's obviously also another problem. Uh, when we're talking about water pollution, we're talking about when there's degradation of aquatic habitats. Okay, so the water is being polluted. Um, an example would be when we have excess fertilizer that can, that's carried by rain into streams and that cause algal blooms. And what that is, we get this excess fertilizers, f fertilizer, algae flourish, they reproduce a lot, and you get a significant amount of algal blooms. And you can see here in this water is very green. A lot of that is just algae. Or more, well, the green, what's causing the green color would be algae. All right, now what's the problem with this? Algae, do they use oxygen? Yes, yes they do use oxygen. And if they're in the water and they're using up all the oxygen because you have so many, what's going to happen to the fish? They die. They die. And that's the problem with algal blooms. So um, they, they flourish too much. They use up the oxygen, and the fish and other organisms in the water die. Um, detergents, heavy metals, and industrial chemicals in runoff can cause sickness or death in aquatic environment. So these are all problems that cause water pollution. What's the third type of pollution? Land pollution. So let's look at that right now. The average American produces about 1.8 kilograms of solid waste daily, which is 657 kilograms per year. Where does all that junk go? Okay, so we um, th th this is buried in landfills, and of course that's going to destroy wildlife habitats by taking up space and polluting the immediate area. Ha have any one of you guys been close to a landfill before? Yes. How good does it smell? Awesome. Wait, did someone say awesome? Home cooking? Whoa, I've never eaten at your house, sir. <laughs> that, all right, it obviously smells really bad, and it's, it's not just the scent that's a problem, but obviously it is also um, polluting the immediate area of that landfill. Question? Don't landfills, um, can't they get, like, gases build up and they can explode? It depends on what you have in the landfills, yes. All right, but so... All right, so another example, DDT. Uh, DDT was a, a, a chemical that was used in insecticides in the past, but there was a problem with this DDT. Um, it caused thin shells in the eggs of birds, so the birds would lay the eggs and the eggs would break. Okay, so obviously that's, that's showing how there can be a direct effect on uh, some population in an area if you're using a chemical such as DDT. DDT is not used anymore in inse insecticides, but that would still be an example of something that can cause pollution. What are, the, what are the threats to biodiversity? Number one, habitat, habitat loss. loss. Number two, habitat number three, habitat okay, what are the three types of habitat degradation? Air, <laughs> you know, what are they? Number one, air, air water, water, and air. land pollution. Now let's talk. Let's talk about the last threat uh, to biodiversity that we're going to look at, and that would be introduction of exotic species. Uh, and when we say exotic species, we mean a species that's not common in a particular area. All right, so. It grow, they grow at an exponential rate due to lack of predators and competitors. We don't have any predators and competitors for the, those, um, that exotic species. So they grow at exponential rate. And of course, we know that if we change one population, we affect another population. All right, so these can have 
some cascading effects. That is the end of section one. In review, we've looked at, we've answered the question, what is biodiversity? We looked at island biodiversity. Uh, which one has greater biodiversity, larger or smaller island? Warmer or colder island? All right, good stuff. And then we looked at the importance of biodiversity. Why is biodiversity important? Do you guys remember the reasons from last time? Beautiful. It makes things, it gives beauty. What else? <laughs> Stability. Stability. Okay, we looked at the cornfield, and if one corn stalk gets the disease, it spreads rapidly. And there was one more reason. Life depends on life. That's another reason. Um, in a second, uh, we also looked at the threats to biodiversity. 